Hey, uh, Frank, I found some words that have been taken out of the dictionary. So we, we talked about new words being added to the dictionary. At time to time, they have to retire right. some of them. So here's some words that are being retired okay. from the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Uh, you, sir, okay. are a snollygoster. A shrewd, okay. un, a shrewd, unprincipled person. I guess it's more a Trump. Maybe we should bring it back in in the days of Trump. Um, how about yeah, a, we should. A hodad. You're, what is that? You're a hodad if you go to a surfer beach, but you're not a surfer and you pretend to be one. And I've done that before. And finally, for you, Frank, a, yes. a, a fredescent. It's an adjective. Having or approaching the appearance or habit of being a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I like that one. Yeah, we should keep that. Hey, Kev, just to let you know, I know that you're all about healthy eating. Uh, Crew to Cafe, if you're thinking about doing something that's raw and vegan, you can see Claudia, she's just setting up for a catering job a little bit later on. She's got all her stuff set there, but uh, she does raw vegan food. Amazing. So if you need to bring your bell of health, that's the best way to do it. Okay, let's see what's going on in your seven day forecast. Today, you're gonna to see daytime highs right around seasonal, but into the afternoon, right around five o'clock, we could start into some wet snow that's gonna continue on and off through the overnight period into tomorrow morning. That's gonna move from wet snow over to rain tomorrow as the temperature will warm up. Then as we take a look into Thursday, we could see morning flurries, and then finally we'll break out of that pattern. By the time we get into Friday, a little bit of mixing as well, but where we'll see the real clearing is through the weekend. Best day your seven days is going to be on Sunday, mainly sunny skies, some nice lighter winds through the weekend. And on Monday too, we'll see a mix of sun and cloud. Today, winds are going to be quite breezy through the afternoon at about 30 to 50 kilometers per hour. So as I'm on Cruda's bike here, I know somebody that loves to cycle and eat, loves to eat well too, and that's Carrie. Over to you. Nice. Nice bell. See if you can bring that back. I like it. Uh, right now, we are in great shape on the major routes. Uh, starting to see a bit of volume delays, but uh, really nothing too bad. Uh, we just have one issue that's in town. TTC reporting some broken water main repairs happening at Queen and Woodbine. So that's affecting uh, the streetcars along Queen Street in between Kingston Road and Neville Loop. They are now shuttle buses, so just keep that in mind. But uh, traffic is pretty light in the area, so we're not spotting any delays. That's it for traffic for now. Back to you, Tammy. Well, breaking right now, warming relations between North and South Korea. The two countries have agreed to hold summit talks. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un also promises to not use nuclear weapons against the South and is open to denuclearization of his country if the survival of his regime is guaranteed. Now, this is good news on the Korean Peninsula. Relations between the two countries have been cold ever since the Korean War. Technically, the two are still at war as they've never signed a treaty. Now, here at home, in just about an hour's time, pickets will be going up around the campus at York University. That's where more than 3,000 employees are now on strike. We have a live look at the campus this morning. The strikers, members of QP Local 3903, are contract faculty, teaching assistants, and graduate assistants. Uh, they rejected Friday's latest offer from the school, and there's no word when the two sides may be meeting again. The union insists job security is one of their big issues. Some classes are being canceled due to the labor dispute. We'll be hearing from a York official coming up later this morning. A court appearance later today for a man charged with first-degree murder in a fatal shooting in Mississauga. 39-year-old Joseph Chang was arrested just before 8 last night at a McDonald's restaurant near King and Dufferin. A one witness describes the terrifying moments when emergency task force officers rushed into the fast food outlet to grab them. It scared the heck out of everybody. Everybody was laying on the floor. They were told, get down. They could hear, could be, hear a couple of police officers and they're just screaming, everybody down. After about well, five minutes or so or something like that, there was a gentleman they had laid down on the floor here. You can see, I can see his legs and his shoes. They had him laid down, face down on the ground, and he was handcuffed. They brought him out within a couple of minutes. 25-year-old Alicia Lewandowski was shot and killed early yesterday morning at a townhouse complex near Rathburn and Dixie. Police believe the suspect was the boyfriend of the murder victim. Toronto police have found the remains of a seventh person in planters taken from a Leaside home linked to alleged serial killer Bruce MacArthur. Investigators also releasing a photo of a man that they suspect is a victim, but they're doing so as a last resort. And that's because they haven't been able to identify the deceased man. 
I've never done this, and I, I, I do it uh, with great hesitation. We are not showing the picture on breakfast television because of its graphic nature, but it can be seen on our website. That's citynews.ca. Police won't say where they got the photo, but they hope a member of the public can help them identify the victim. If you have any information, you can call the Homicide Squad or Crime Stoppers. So far, no further charges have been laid against 66-year-old Bruce MacArthur, who is charged with six counts of first-degree murder. Police have only been able to identify three of the seven sets of remains that have been recovered. Four people are under arrest in what Toronto police allege was a sophisticated $17 million mortgage fraud. The investigation was dubbed Project Bridal Path and dates back to 2013. These suspects are accused of securing mortgages on several high-end properties that they didn't own by forging documents. Three of the suspects are charged with fraud and one suspect charged with forgery in connection to the case.